In the Portland metro real estate market, the big story is a national one and it's all about rates. Residential interest rates hit a new high and they aren't showing any signs of easing. As of Wednesday, the best case scenario for a 30-year fixed mortgage was 7.5%. We haven't seen numbers like that for almost 20 years. Locally, we've been seeing some surprising numbers in both prices and buyer demand, so let's jump into the numbers. The average sale price was up by another 1% from the previous week, and it was just barely higher than the average last year at this time, higher by just 0.7%. What I think is interesting here is that since August 1st, the average sale price has been higher than last year's for six of the last 10 weeks. It still feels like we're treading water versus last year's prices, but leaning just slightly higher than last year. The supply of homes available for buyers to purchase is also just kind of treading waters, at least it is for this week. We saw an increase of just one whole home from <laughs> versus the previous week. So not a big jump there. The number of homes new to the market, you know, new to the for sale market was up by 3% versus the previous week, but a good chunk of those homes, probably 150 or so of them are what I call sneaky new listings. That is their old listings disguised as new. We crossed over the end of the month this last week. And that's when we typically see a lot of listing agreements expire. Many of these sellers will renew their agreements with their current agent or with a new agent, and the home will pop up on the market as if it's brand new. So a healthy portion of the homes that were new to the market weren't actually brand new. On the demand side, the number of new purchase agreements entered into by buyers and sellers was surprisingly high. With rates at seven and a quarter or higher, I was expecting to see this number down in the 400s but we actually ended up over the previous week and we landed kind of in line with what we've been seeing over the past few weeks in that 550 range. Still no significant change in the number of bank owned homes and pre foreclosure homes on the active market. However, I did see a slight uptick in the number of notices of default this past week. The notice of default, as I've said in the past, is that first step in the foreclosure process. So I'll keep an eye on that number and see if that's the start of a new trend. By the way, here you can see what I was talking about earlier with a 540% increase in the number of expired listing agreements. That's just because we hit the end of the month. I have to say that I am surprised by the number of new purchase agreements entered into by buyers and sellers this past week. I am very curious to see if this week's higher interest rates, 7.5% best case scenario, will actually slow buyer activity more than we typically see this time of year. Is there a threshold that buyers won't cross, or is this the result of scarcity, lack of supply in both the for rent and purchase markets in the metro area? We did see an interesting report last week from the Home Builders Survey, where they reported that as much as 42% of their purchases were from first time home buyers, where the typical share of that segment of the market is only around 27%. Why I find this interesting is that first time home buyers are a category of buyers who were all but sidelined during our recent frenzy years. Maybe what's happening here is that they're seeing an opportunity and they're taking it, aided by home builders financing incentives and they are just driving the market right along. We'll see. Well, you made it to the end of the report. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and please drop a comment below to let me know where you're watching from. I'm always curious to know that. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week.